Hello, everybody. Today I'm going to be giving you ideas on what to do when you're overwhelmed, giving quick fixes to tough circumstances. And no, I'm not going to be all like, when the coil head and break and spawn, they power into you and they my people. That's just not the essence of the game. I do want to quickly say, holy cow, the support on the last video flying dropkick my expectations, beating even my most popular friend's most popular video. And as always, thank you for watching. And for today's sponsor, <laughs> Boats. <laughs> And we're back to the video. <laughs> to quickly get Spore Lizard and Jester over with, since they do nothing and everything respectively, let's get them out of the way. Spore Lizard runs away at light speed on spotting you, and if you're too close, it might show some teeth. Realistically, the worst it does is cause some Squidward noise pollution. And the Jester. The only real counter is hitting the door every time you see him jack himself up. He's an insta-kill and invincible Kia boxcar. Letting him block your exit is certain death. Now for the blobby smurda. <laughs> now for the blobby shmurda and spider. Both are situationally dangerous and situationally easy to counter. The blob you can normally just jump over and take tickle damage at most. Its biggest threat is if you're backpedaling and didn't hear it, or this apparently. The spider is only a threat if it has a comically well placed web or it hasn't made any webs yet. If it hasn't made a nest, then it chases you basically on sight until you die or run far enough away. Other than that, he chillin'. Yeah, don't do that. For Coil and Bracken, you have to maintain the same level of alertness. Keep watching your 6 by wrapping around the Coil occasionally, or doing quick 360s if it's safe. Finding a door to close on the Coil is usually what I like to do to escape the clamp it has and hit the dash, but that's not always a good idea if you have teammates in proximity. Here I'm letting the Coil tag along, and doing what I can to ensure I get out with my spinal column. The Bracken in this situation really isn't that big of a threat because he only attacks every like 20 to 30 seconds. Giving him a quick looksy daisy is really all it takes. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? I think I'm above you. I think we're at a point where we can hear you, but we can't get to you because it just RNG the other way. Okay, well, Bracken and Coil hit around me. Oh, good. Loot bugs are kind of complex and hard to predict. They chase you if you take one of their items until you drop it. They chase you if you step in their nest until you run outside of a certain range. Sometimes they randomly chase you if they want an item from you. And they chase you if you attack one until you find a door or kill them. If you know you can't deal with a loot bug and something else at the same time, your best shot is to drop a piece of loot and run with the hope they yippee their way out of there. Since the ghost girl put some Drake level of vocal processing on your hearing, this can make big baddies like the thumper and giant near inaudible. If you can't find a way to get out quickly, chances are you die here. Inside I like to try to use things like stairwells to jump down or staircases in the case of the mansion interior, since you can get a little bit more time to run from the girl. I messed up the escape here even with infinite stamina. If you find yourself with a pillow pet stuck on your face and a coil witnessing it, you must stay looking in the coil's direction. In single player, you can just stand still, or in any player, you can pick up your shovel and choose violence. Bruh. Baboon hawks fight pretty much anything. It's really entertaining to watch them fight. If one starts sticking a giant, it never stops, and it gets the giant very distracted. He can still spot you, though. Oh my god, dude! Don't do that! I guess I'll give Mimics a bit of an introduction, since they're new. These guys are interesting because they spawn indoors and follow you outdoors. Indoors, they're about as annoying as coil heads because they kind of predict your movement and rush toward you. Having anything over about 50 pounds will give them the power to slowly catch up to you with their walk-jog routine. I recommend shedding some weight to either get away or make it easier to fight them. And on the topic of fighting, they take 4 shovel hits to kill and 2 shotgun shots. 
Outdoors, you can pretty easily walk up to a dog and let it do the dirty work for you, with the added bonus of it disrespecting their corpse. Do be careful with this maneuver though, the dogs can just kinda lunge into you and the mimic. But I can't say the same for giants, they really only care about you. And take this with a grain of salt, but I think mimics are much less common in solo play. Doing about 20 days on Ren solo, I have only seen one, whereas when I was playing with the squad, I saw him almost every round. Okay, there's also probably a mimic in there. Okay, I'll try to kill it, maybe. Don't even get me started on nutcrackers. Oh, ouch! Ow! They are very loud intentionally because they need to be. Stomping around when patrolling, which is pretty fast and erratic by the way, stopping and making clicking noises when they open up their eyeball and scan the area, making a chain pulling noise when they're about to fire, somehow they start playing the drums when they're chasing you, and they reload if you survive two shots somehow. Without knowing these audio cues, they are near impossible to fight. They also insta-kill via foot if you touch them or they run into you. Really, if you don't have a shovel and good cover, it's not a good idea to be near them. And this is where the enemy combo part comes in. Trying to run by or fight a nutcracker with a coil head around is probably the worst thing I've tried to do to get a clip. Either one can stitch you up so easily with one minor mistake. This makes the average Dutch male combo my least favorite combo. Your only way out of this situation is to get the most ideal flash on the nutcracker and hitting it five times after locking the coil behind a door, then quickly going back to watching the coil. If you aren't going for the kill, then just run. Get away from the nutcracker. Here's a quick montage of me not doing that. What? Oh, he killed you? There's two nutcrackers. Oh, what? <laughs> I'm about to blast him, bro. Here's why cover is important. Here you see me panic as he leaps off the edge and I run behind a bookshelf. I can constantly rotate around. I'm a bit clueless here so I play it safe, not punishing every reload he does. Every time I hear the chain pulling noise, I know he's about to shoot, so I take cover and decide whether or not it's worth hitting him. As long as you have something circular to wrap around, you can take him down pretty fast. I just hit a bracket by accident, bro! One extra thing to note is they don't take damage when patrolling, which is when they don't have their eyeball showing. Okay. Nope. Now I finally go in to get the last two hits after figuring out the method. No way. Alright, that's all you get. And again, thanks for all the support. I really didn't expect it. If you want to see more fun Lethal Company stuff, blow open the like button with a double barrel and thank Big Tony for the thumbnail. Peace. <laughs>